So after watching that video, we can then bring this as a perfect example that evolution does indeed happen. We know that it happens, we see it happen, and perhaps you may be saying, well, yeah, but that's only, you know, a change in the beak size of, you know, a, a millimeter. Well, yeah, but that's in a couple years. And Darwin once famously said, time, unimaginable tracks of time is the key. And just as mountains can move with lots of time through small tectonic movements, species can also move with long periods of time. Millions and millions of years can cause species to completely change into new species, to branch into to different species, and so forth. So natural selection then, we can, we can say that based on these postulates, given that variation is inherited and that overproduction occurs, there then is this struggle for existence. And this is the way that Darwin couched his argument in his book. The inescapable conclusion then is an unequal reproductive success. Some individuals will be better off at reproducing given their, their characteristics which they inherited than other individuals in the same population. And this then causes a shift. It causes a change in characteristics over time. This unequal reproductive success was what Darwin called natural selection because it's nature that is doing the selecting based on whatever those individuals are in the current environment. The product of natural selection is adaptation. So that's why we talk about adaptations happening because adaptations occur due to natural selection. So the final thing that we want to look at is this cartoon, right? So look at this real quickly. If you were to say, okay, if we're saying that time is proceeding from um, from this side of the the cartoon over to this side of the cartoon. What is it that how could you explain the changes in both the dinosaurs and the trees from this side to this side? Well, over here all there's dinosaurs of different lengths necks and there's trees that are really tall and really short. Well, which which trees are all of these dinosaurs going to most easily be able to forage upon? the shorter ones. And so pretty soon the shorter ones are not producing as much seeds as the taller ones. And so in the next generation you would expect there to be on average taller trees because more taller trees were able to reproduce, produce seeds because they didn't get foraged on and that's why you would see taller trees. Um, the dinosaurs in that next generation have not changed. They're still the same. But then we go, but now what the dinosaurs are eating has changed. Now the, all of the trees are taller. So what do we see in response to that? Again, over many generations, as time passes, only dinosaurs that, ha or not only, but most dinosaurs that have longer necks are going to, on average, be able to eat more foliage, more of the trees. And so they are going to reproduce and produce offspring with longer necks. And so it's not a surprise that pretty soon you see now dinosaurs with longer necks. Okay, and that's how you can explain that, that, that fun cartoon. So that brings us to the end of our natural selection postulates lecture. And again, what we have done in this lecture is demonstrated that indeed evolution does happen via natural selection. We've shown an example with beaks of birds. We've talked about other examples. And it is this type of evolution that is responsible for much of the change that has occurred over the billions of years of life on this planet.